This is the most ambitious project for the city so far. You see, we currently have this river running through the map, which splits in two at this location, and we joins a bit further down, making this natural island in the middle. This is a cool natural feature, but for the type of city that I'm trying to build here, which should resemble a circuit board, I think I want to reshape the existing water feature into something unique. I'm going to divert this river and move it closer to the downtown layout, outlining the existing roads. The river source is placed at an altitude much higher than the road layout itself, so the biggest challenge here will be not only to divert a river to this location without flooding the city completely, but also make it run through the downtown with the same height level through its entire length. The first thing I've done was to define the area, or the path, I want the river to take, or in this case, the canal, because it's man-made. For this, I have to extend the existing road layout, which follows a unique octagonal pattern, so I make a bunch of dirt roads that I can use as guidelines to create this pattern. You can see how I created the entire original layout in this video. Another feature I wanted for this river was the lake between the original river and the city itself, which is this big circle in the middle. This was originally intended to be a pit where excess water would be contained, thus avoiding flooding the city. However, as I played and learned a bit how water works in this game, I figured this isn't necessary at all, but I decided to keep it and I can always turn it into something cool in the future like a dedicated water treatment facility area located upstream of the city for example. After I had the basic shape, I then deleted the guidelines and moved to the area downstream. This is the area where the canal rejoins the original river. I pulled a set of roads with the same spacing as the original layout to guide the path I want the canal to follow, just like in the upstream section. I then worked on the top connection and for this I had to bulldoze the rail. I cannot forget to rebuild it again. I also built these walls temporarily to prevent flooding while I'm messing with the water flow. I can bulldoze them in the future or keep them and shape them into a more natural looking mountain range. Then I dug out the area for the canal. The depth is not really important here, so I just selected the depth level I thought was adequate. I connected the start of the canal to the water source with a slope, and of course I covered the original river. Here's a quick update on the progress of this project. I have completely dug out the canal, and uh, I think this is an appropriate depth for it. Not too deep and not too shallow, I think this is something that you could see in real life. Perhaps not this thick, not really sure if this is a common width for a canal, but overall I am happy with it, I think we can work with this. And as we move further north, we get to the pit that I've built, which is this massive uh, development. Uh, it's actually quite big in area, not really sure if I went overboard with this, so if you can uh, compare its size to uh, the rest of the city, you can see that it's quite massive. Um, but I think we can let it get filled with water and see how it looks, I think we can commit to this shape. I'm confident it will look good. And the next step would be obviously to unpause the simulation and fill this thing with water completely. So if I move further north to our source point at the original river, you can clearly see that there's nothing holding this water back. So as soon as I unpause the simulation, all of this water will flow down this ramp into the pit, which is exactly what we want. However, we have a, a small problem, which is 
the height level of the river is much higher than the height level of the pit below, as you can clearly see from this angle. And if we don't stop the water flow somehow, I fear that the water is going to continuously flow into the pit and the water level will rise way above the desired limit, which is delineated by this road over here, which is the exact same level of um, the rest of the city. And if it goes above this road, it will completely flood the city downstream over here, as you can see, which is clearly something that we do not want. So what I think I'm going to do is let the water flow into the pit and as soon as the water level gets to the desired height, I am going to block the water flow over here by closing this gap with the terraform tool and preventing water from coming in. And this will give us a good baseline for what we're going to do next. That's also why I have blocked the canal over here so we can have a better perception of when the water reaches the desired height level. I think we can do this in sections. First we are going to fill the pit to the desired height level and then we can move on to the rest of the canal. I also built these tall walls to protect the city from flooding in case an accident happens, which is something very very possible. So that's pretty much a plan, I'm going to unpause the simulation, let the water flow and proceed as described. While I wait for the pit to fill up, I use this time to adjust the slope leading into it. And then I just waited until it was filled to the desired height level. This took a considerable amount of time as the simulation runs really slowly, even at the fastest speed. When the pit was full, I clogged the entry point to avoid it from filling further. This is necessary because, as we've seen, the river is at a much higher altitude than this area and water is going to continuously flow until it reaches the height level of the water source. The pit is now completely filled with water. Because I have blocked off this section, the water level is perfectly stable at the height level that we have defined and it's not gonna go any higher than this, which is exactly what we wanted. And just to illustrate what I was telling you guys about, if you take a look at the water level from this section, you can see that it's much much higher than the water level in this section and that's because the water source of this river is continuously pumping water into this section. And it doesn't matter how deep I would make this ditch, the water source of this river would continuously pump water into this, this section at an infinite rate until it reaches the baseline height level. So the purpose of this uh, pit is precisely that, is so that the height level of the water that is going to go into the canal is controlled and defined by the height level of the water inside the pit and not by the water source on this section here, on the river. Because the height level of the pit is sitting at this level, we know that the water level is never ever gonna go higher than this point and because of that it will never flood our city. Now, if this is anything like City Skylines 1, this is a standard pool of water and not a manually placed water source, which means it could evaporate over time. I haven't experienced any evaporation in this game, but the simulation also runs super super slowly, so it's possible that there's some evaporation going on and we're just not noticing it. Nevertheless, I will show you how I will handle that later in the video. At the same time, simultaneously, I don't like how these two pools of water are separated with this piece of land. I don't think it looks very, very good. The idea was for this to be a continuous flow of water. So I'll show you how I handle this later in the video as well. But for the time being, we can move on and work on the canal. After preparing the canal by removing trees and creating the outlining roads, I unclog the endpoint to let the water flow into this area.
While water is moving into this section, I move on to create the keys at the shores. You see, I don't want that ugly ground texture next to the coast, especially since this is going to be a developed area. I think these man-made keys are much more appropriate for this area of the city. It involves a bit of work, as you can see, and I probably should have done this before filling it up with water, but I simply forgot. The end result was the same though, so that's cool. After letting the water level adjust and building a portion of the keys, this turned into this, and it just looks much better already. I'm still far away from the desired result though, as there are still some keys to build and the water level is still too low. To fix this, I opened the tap once again to let in a bit more water and closed it a few seconds later. I repeated this process several times until the water level at the pit was at an appropriate level. I had a hard time filling up the canal throughout its entire length. As the water traveled further from the pit, the lower the height level. The end section was super low which is something I simply did not want. I wanted, ideally, the water to be the same level throughout its entire length. I found out this trick to make it easier and faster, which consists of filling up the canal in sections, little by little. Notice how the water rises in the new sections when I unclog them. Maybe water would have adjusted itself had I waited enough time, but I found this method to be faster. Eventually, with some patience, this empty ditch turned into a gorgeous and filled canal. Ok, so another live update. Things are going very very nicely. We have this beautiful canal that uh, goes along the entire downtown area. Of course, there are some things that need to be adjusted, like we have these pieces of land glitching out the seawalls, but that's something we can adjust later on. But overall, I'm really satisfied with how this is turning out to be. The height level is perfectly set, and if you notice, it's almost perfectly horizontal uh, throughout the entire uh, length of the canal. One of the things that I was mostly concerned about was that this section over here, downstream, would be at a much lower height level than this area on top. But that does not seem to be the case. There's some height difference, but uh, not very significant, so I can perfectly live with this. Earlier I pointed out that we were going to solve this situation over here. I really don't like how both pools of water are separated with this piece of land, that doesn't look good at all. But at the same time, I cannot simply remove it, because if I do so, all of the water that's contained over here is going to completely overflow the area at the bottom. So, basically, we need to find a way to regulate the amount of water that flows from this side to this side at the bottom. And the way we are going to achieve that is going to be with hydroelectric power plants, or dams for short. By setting a dam at a very specific height level, I can make it so that it expels a little amount of water into the pool below, while not flooding it. I can only see benefits in this strategy, because first and foremost it's gonna look awesome, it's gonna look uh, somewhat realistic, it's gonna generate some power for the city, and by continuously pumping water into the pit, it will also prevent any type of evaporation below which is amazing. The same thing will be done downstream, at the end of the canal, in this section over here. This area, however, is gonna be a bit more complicated and um, much more sensitive. The dam needs to be placed at the perfect height level so that it expels some water to the canal and joining uh, the river below, but not that much water that the water level from the canal upstream is going to decrease drastically, so there's going to be a little bit of experimentation with that. After we do this, we will have a continuous river, a continuous canal, that will originate from this river up top, will go along the entire city, hug the downtown area, and merge to its original source at about over here, just as it was 
uh, originally. So I think we have a plan, let's work on that. Starting upstream, I needed to be super careful as a simple mistake would completely flood my city. So I built this gap, this safe section in the middle surrounded by walls on all sides, where I could test different height levels for dams safely until I get that sweet spot. If I build the dam too low, it will release too much water and flood the city. Building it too high so that no water goes through would work, but it would also not generate any power. And for the sake of efficiency, I kinda want this dam to work and serve a purpose, so I want to build it low enough that it generates at least some power. The efficiency indicator in the tool panel for the dam also lets you know how much lower you can build the dam in the low water depth warning. Another factor that affects dam efficiency is water current. The stronger the current leading into the dam, the more powerful and more energy it generates. So I played a bit with the river split to adjust the water current appropriately. For the dam downstream, I originally built it at the same height level of the road layout, which is what you're seeing here. But this blocked the flow of water completely and let no water through, which obviously I did not want. So I lowered it a little bit. Here the dam was lowered just a little bit relative to the original layout but that was more than enough to let the water through and generate some power, as you can see. Finally, I can fix the terrain. I got rid of those tall walls because I don't need them anymore. So I tried to make them more natural looking and more organic. This is just a quick fix for the time being, while I decide what I want to do here. The lake itself has tons of possibilities. I could move my water pumping stations here, or even create a water treatment center in the area. Nuclear power plants also use water for cooling, so perhaps I could even build a nuclear center. Or maybe just a casual mountain range with wind turbines at the top, and pathways for people to walk right next to the lake. The point is, the terraforming of this area will mostly depend on what I decide to do here, so this is definitely not the final result. I then rebuilt the downtown area and start planning the road sections for the other side of the river. I'm still not sure what I'll be building on this island, perhaps a technical university, I think that would be cool. I will want a park next to the canal and maybe a commercial strip on the other coast. But for the time being, I simply extend the roads as well as the tram line. Ok, the dams are now fully operational, just in time for winter, let's check those out. So overall I think I have achieved what I wanted, um, the effect that the dams are now creating in this area is very very suitable, that's exactly what we wanted. We have this dam over here, so the first and foremost, it is complementing and retaining the water above very very perfectly and not letting anything go down into the pit, which is exactly what we wanted. If I take a look at it, um, at its performance, it's producing around 20 uh, megawatts, so almost 30 megawatts, which is roughly the same as a small coal power plant. So this is definitely not a lot, not very efficient, given that the maximum amount that these things can generate is 20,000 megawatts, but at the same time, the purpose of these dams is not to generate power, but to retain the water, which is being accomplished very, very effectively. If we take a look at the dam below, oh, and of course, uh, the tram line was rebuilt. Of course, this is temporarily, I don't really uh, like this shape particularly, but it's now fully functional. And trains can now travel between the external city and the circuit port. But moving on to the other dam downstream, 
Just like the other dam, it is accomplishing its purpose, which is to let go a little bit of water into the river below. This one is only producing 2 megawatts, which again, it's uh, very insignificant. And you can even take a look at its efficiency status where it says that it's losing 94% of its efficiency due to low water depth. But again, uh, the purpose of the dam is not to generate power and be efficient, it's just to retain as maximum water as possible and leak a little bit of water just so we have a continuous river. And if you zoom out this much, you can see that the river is very, very shallow. You can even see the floor underneath the water. But to be honest, I actually really like this effect. I think it looks amazing, actually. As for the canal itself, I am particularly satisfied with it. I noticed that the water level is a bit lower than uh, what we had previously, like a couple of minutes ago. And I'm not really sure if uh, that's because of uh, what we've done with the water flow, namely by building this dam, which is uh, leaking a little bit of water, or if there's some evaporation going on. I think we need to let the simulation run a little bit more, and in a couple of videos we can double check on this and see if it is indeed decreasing. I also think it makes sense in theory, because this dam is operating at a higher capacity than this one below, and it's leaking out more water than the one that is expelling water, we should never have a water shortage in the canal. But again, this is just uh, my theory and might not apply to the current game mechanics. I've also built these bridges, but I'm not really sure if I'm gonna keep them. I think this length is so short that it does not justify this type of sophisticated bridge in this location. Perhaps we can just have a normal horizontal bridge just like I've done in the sixth line over here. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with how this area has turned out. Of course, there's still a lot of work to be done here, namely when it comes to terraforming. There's also no developments over here, just roads, and I think when I start adding some buildings and some parks and some uh, offices and residences, it will make this area much, much better than what it is right now. So I'm looking forward to it. Also, I should point out that Everything that I've done in this video was previously tested during a live stream, which you can watch on YouTube. So if you want to watch me struggle with water mechanics, and you like long unedited gameplay of City Skylines 2, you can watch the live stream replay here. I will put a link somewhere in this video or in the description. But that's going to be it for this video. Hope to see you again on the next one to follow the development of this amazing city. Make sure to watch the next video right here. Until then, bye bye.